cleaning up. So he's taking a minute here and he's just going to give us a blessing. I told us that we had school. And so Jim Chosa is going to, at the leading of the Holy Spirit, just put the bless of God upon y'all. <laughs> All right, Papa Jim. Yes, it's uh, really going to be a decree. But in the decree, there is a magnificent blessing. Okay. And it's a decree we're familiar with in a certain sense. But in the reality of it, it's a, it's a king's decree through his kingly people. Do we have any kingly people in the house tonight? Oh, yeah. You got, you got, what, what do you pull upon your indigenous native uh, culture? We have some crazy dog warriors here. <laughs> I'll tell you the story about the crazy dogs later. That was really cool. Uh, yes, we do, sir. So we have a few kingly people in the house. Amen. Amen. All right. So like I said, this will be a decree because what Kevin said is going to be a deliverance and healing session you're going into. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> This is from the king to his kingly people. And he wants to align us now in the covenant of the blood of the cross with his kingly decree. So say with me, all of you, in the blood of the lamb slain. In the blood of the lamb slain. Mighty king. Mighty king. Jesus. Jesus. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Lead us. Lead us. Not into temptation. Not into temptation. Lead us out. Lead us out. Of temptation. Of temptation. And deliver us. And deliver us. By the power of your blood. By the power of your blood. From all evil. From all evil. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. And amen. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for the bless and the decree. For you decree a thing, it shall be established for you, and light shall shine upon your way. So we're here in Olympia, and even though it's raining, we're shining. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're going to bless you now with favor. Great evening. Favor with the insurance company that all that is being cleaned up would be taken care of, as is your inheritance. The favor of the Lord Jesus Christ into the situation and say, thank you, Father, that you are bringing the choices to greater because that is your word. And everybody Amen. said. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. And faith has a word. All right. I will cause you to move with sudden speed, with an urgency in this time of acceleration to fulfill my purposes in the earth. I can see and feel a great movement of worship and praise arising within my children across the universe. From one end meeting to the other, do not be apprehensive in what I am about to deliver to all nations and people. I will pour water and blood on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. My spirit is upon your offspring. tenacity and dedication get ready to ratify the mandates i have set before you now in the days ahead the world is in complete chaos and confusion coming from the formless source of darkness causing nebulous spiritual blindness 
twisting and entangling the human race. The successful move of divine power will strike the hearts and minds of my people of the earth. I will move you with sudden speed, with an urgency in this time of acceleration to fulfill my purposes on the planet you now live on. I have anointed you. My anointing oil will never lack in your life. Ooh. Amen. Thank you so much. We receive that the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and in the light of the Holy Spirit. And we say in your native tongue, bis chia, bis chia la chia sac. Bis, we have, yeah, I missed it. Help, help me with that. Bis. Dishbiala. Bishlea. Dishbiala. Dishbiala chia sac. The fire never goes out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need a little help there. You know what I mean? Moto. Yeah, we learned the word moto in Japanese. We have Miko here, and she's Japanese, and moto means more. And then friends who've just come back from Swahili, they're on the Tuesday call. Jim and yes, yes, uh, uh, Debbie, Rick. Uh, and moto in Swahili means fire. So moto, moto, more fire. Dish bia la chiasak. Blood of the covenant. <laughs> I'm getting inebriated. <laughs> Ooh, daddy's bringing drink. <laughs> hey, oh. Well, you all have a great time in the fire of the Lord through the blood of the covenant tonight. All right. The bless of God upon you. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. Love you lots. Oh, he's a good papa. Ooh. Ooh. It's in here. So we heard it. It's right here. Yeah, I, I hear you though. Um, yeah. She is the great granddaughter of Pretty Shield, who was native married to General Custer's scout. His name was Goes Ahead. <laughs> the scout goes ahead. Jim is Ojibwe from Upper Peninsula, Michigan. She is Crow from uh, Montana, Yellowtail. Uh, and we met them at a, an ICA conference in Dallas years ago. We had prayed them in because we do a lot of land assignments and we needed indigenous native authority to keep from getting beat up. So, uh, yeah, he's good papa. He's He's connected with us, not legally, but spiritually, where I am, International Apostolic Ministries with Wayne Anderson, of which, and Jim and Faith, uh, Q2C Qualified to Conquer, which is not a group of churches, but a group of intercessors around the world, basically, basically in this country, but not inclusive, only in this country. And so we've come together as uh, intercessor. We've been with them 13 years, with Wayne 23 years, but we're together, linked at the hip spiritually. So... We have the blessing of being at the confluence of two mighty apostolic rivers, and I drink daily. <laughs> so I'm releasing that into you all right here, right now. Even that word, that, that, that it's in your heart, as you said, it may not all come to mind, but that's okay. As we said in the beginning of this this morning, open your heart to be filled from that place you hear the living word of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing, hearing his word, his now mountain moving, devil stomping, now miraculous word. Wow. <sighs> the bad guys have the media in the spirit and in the natural, but we're taking it back. The prince of the power of the air is coming down, taking it down one truth at a time. I shut my TV off a while ago. It's like the two guys walking down the road to Emmaus with Jesus. They were walking with the solution, but they listened to the fake news. <laughs> they thought he was dead. He wasn't dead. He was walking with them. And that's not to any one side politically. There's fake news on the fake news on the fake news on the fake news to the point that people aren't listening. We're getting dumbed down, which is what the powers that be wanted anyways. And so we listen to his word and the Holy Spirit and get the news. So, yeah, yeah. Whew. 
That was the news. We just got the news. Did you, you know? You saw somebody put up Kevin at seven, news at eleven. So I don't know who wrote that. That was pretty cool, though. Whatever, the, whoever did that, who did that? Anybody? Was that you that did that? God bless you. You had it down. It's kind of a little. It's okay. Nothing wrong. I'm just telling you what I do. It's it's so uh, news at eleven. So I think we just got the news at one. <laughs> Turn it over to me. Thank you very much. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jesus is in the building. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh oh. <sighs> yeah. Uh, wait a minute. I gotta pull my pants up. I think we have some supernatural weight loss going on here. <laughs> 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 this piggy rides again. I picked that up in Toronto in '94. The snort, I can't get rid of it. So, it's so if we're gonna have a, 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 a an impartation meeting, and anyone that likes it could have it. I know. Yeah, it's 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 a it is. I just to look. Whatever. It just that happens. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. See, I, I, I was an alcoholic. I'm not going to turn this into a 12-step meeting. Don't worry. And uh, my name's Kevin, and I love Jesus. Hi, Kevin. We can help. <laughs> so, and uh, when I sobered up 30, be 35 years in November, um, day at a time, um, God gave me the gift of not chasing the drink and the natural anymore, but being inebriated in this new wine from time to time. You know, these people are not drunk as you suppose. You know, it's only nine o'clock and that never bothered me. Nine o'clock in the morning in the old days, it just wasn't, not celebrating the sin. I'm just saying it is what it is, you know. Wow. So thank you, Lord, for your new wine. John 2, the wedding feast at Cana of Galilee. Right. The chief steward took the dipper. Someplace between the dip and the lip, the water turned to wine. That was the first miracle of Jesus, was the water turning to wine, which had a lot to do with Jesus and the church being one, more than just being married, wedded, married, I should say, holy matrimony, is the two becoming one like Christ in the church. It's a spiritual substance. It's an atmosphere that's much more powerful than just being married, which is a thing of the state. We gave that over to the state, by the way. That might sound a little radical, but the reason the state can intervene and say, you got to marry this one and you got to marry that one, right, is we're, holy matrimony is totally different. Holy matrimony keeps me together with my wife in relative happiness. <laughs> Not perfection, but relative happiness after a really bad record on my part as far as marriage was concerned because of alcoholism. And I'm not just going to blame the alcohol because that's what alcoholics do. Oh, I was drunk. No, it's the isms. ISM, I, self, and me, the reasons I drank. It's narcissistic. Narcissism, isms, right? So holy matrimony is what has entered into our lives as I yield to the atmosphere of Christ, like Christ in the church being one, right? I just explained that to my daughter and my new son in love. I don't call them in law, I call them in love, right? Just, just me. But that they are wedded, they're in holy matrimony, wedded more than just married. Marriage is about the state. The state says you gotta do this and you gotta do that. We gave it over a long time ago. They have no reason being in the middle of our relationships. It's a heavenly thing. And we gave it away. And we're taking it back. We're taking it back. And that's for the record, if anybody's listening. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Very much so. It's, it's awesome. You know? You know, that there's a scripture uh, that most Christians, I know I jumped over it, what God has put together, let no man separate. 
So did that not bring shame? That was one of those scriptures are I just kind of jump over because I like the happy clappy ones. I like the warm and fuzzy scriptures. I don't like the ones that make me feel like, you know, condemned. Well, that's not what it means. We had a whole deliverance session uh, weekend with people, all Christians, and most everybody in the room had been divorced at least once. I'd been multiple times. I'm not happy about that. That was due to the alcoholism and the isms. Okay. So let me just, um, I wasn't planning this, but the Holy Spirit says, yeah, go for this, just so you'll know. Okay. Um, Numbers 30 is the scripture. But um, what God has put together, let no man separate. When we get married, we get married by a, a minister, a preacher. Okay. But the judge puts the thing, you know, in the, the state, the city, you sign the thing. So you're put together by God and the state. Okay. When you get divorced, the state is what separates you. Let no man separate. In other words, you need to rescind the vows by a spiritual person, not necessarily the one that married you, but someone in kingly, heavenly kingdom authority to break those vows. Because I couldn't understand when my present wife would say something to me, I would hear the voices, not necessarily audible voice, but I would hear it as if one of my former wives had said it. Now, you got more than one. You talk about confusion. <laughs> and my wife said, I didn't say that. I said, well, that's what I heard. Well, that's not what I meant. Oh, and it wasn't until we had that deliverance weekend up in Hope Chapel in Albany, outside of Albany, New York, that I got freed of that. You know, I, I, one of the things we do is free people from vows that were previously made and never rescinded. Because they bring those vows can be very positive. But they also can be negative if used, you know, negatively. And people bring those unbroken vows into the new relationship and it messes up the communication. All right, we can talk about that. Oh, no, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, 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 shoot. Just give me a hand. Just, okay. I don't have to say the right words. You just relax. I want you to read Numbers 30 later, okay? About the father and the daughter and all of that. That's father and father God. Just here it is. I knew there was a reason I was saying this. <sighs> father, she say, I receive your forgiveness. The blood wash forgiveness of Jesus Christ for everything in my life. Things done. Things missed. I release the same forgiveness to my partners from before. Just as you have forgiven me, I've forgiven them. I wish to be released of those vows. I wish to silence the voices. As of Numbers 30, in my past, I silenced those voices by the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ, the most powerful voice in the universe. I may not like my former spouse or spouses. Or sp that's, oh, no, you know, if you don't, if there's no S, that's okay. Okay, good for you. But I let your love, Father in heaven, flow through me to that person. Thank you. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Everybody with me, it is finished. We resonate the words of Jesus. I feel the fire of his love for you. Just feel his fire right now. Feel a Pentecostal fire. The passion of his heart for you. He's telling me right now, you're not damaged goods and you're not second string. If he was in a pickup football game, 
he'd pick you first. He loves you so much. Look, listen to me now. He loves you so much that if God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Wow. And everybody said? Yeah. Wow. Wasn't planning any of that. That's what you call an audible. <laughs> you funny. You funny. Well, I tell the Holy Spirit to take it where he wanted, and he, he is. Wow. You have brain freeze. Brain freeze? Yes. And it was stuck in the refrigerator. So when it comes to healing, Matthew 9, 35 to 38 is true. But you may not see it all the time. It doesn't manifest all the time. I'll explain it. I don't know if I can explain that. I just want to enunciate it like Papa Jim Joseph did. He enunciated it. When Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, like we are today, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and disease amongst the people. Yeah, but that was Jesus. Yeah, but that was Jesus. It was not me. Could be. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, truly the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We are the laborers. We are to fill up, not just for us. So even where we are, when we are at any given time, we don't have to get to a certain point and then release it. We can release wherever we are and whatever we have right now. He wants us, he gives it to us so that we can give it to others. I was 14 days sober, sitting in a meeting that will remain anonymous. <laughs> Sorry, I was being flippant. Sorry. And there's a kid next to me who had less than 24 hours in the meeting, shivering and shaking. He was detoxing. The guy on my other side had about 34 years, kind of where I am now. The kid turned to me and said, how much time you got? I said, about two weeks. He turned to the other guy and said, how much time you got? He said, 34 years. And the kid turned to me and said, how did you do it? <laughs> True story. How did you do it? The other guy was like, Aren't you going to ask me? I'm 35 years. <laughs> no. I call those guys bleeding deacons. They're like Pharisees, you know. Bless them. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. What that told me is I had something to give right then and there. No matter where you are, God will use you right where you are to touch the ones he wants you to touch. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with, it's got everything to do with anointing. You fill up so you can give it away. First great commandment leads to the second. We showed that earlier. I do that in my meetings all the time, have people fill up and then throw it at people just to get them involved, but to realize and people say, well, what's that? I said, it's not witchcraft. It's the other guys do witchcraft. God bless them. I said, what it is, is the earthly dramatization of a heavenly reality. It's kingdom come will be done right now. The substance, the anointing is a substance, right? And the substance takes over and the substance is handleable. And when you have your, it's not so much, the content is important, but the intent is what sends it. The intent sends the content. Faith is energized by love. The content is faith. Luke, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. The woman with the issue of blood. Who touched me? Everybody touched me. They're all pressing it around you. No, no, no. I felt the virtue, dunamis, same word for virtue as power, leave me. Jesus felt him, leave him. It's the substance of heaven. It's the same substance that created the universe. It's the same substance that rose Jesus from the dead and that flowed out of Jesus. He said, I felt it, leave me. Many times I don't feel it, but I feel it when it bounces back. 
I don't necessarily, I don't feel the heat. People feel the heat a lot of times when I touch them, not all the time, but many times. You know, when I enunciate it, they'll feel the fire. I do that to raise their faith, not to manipulate the atmosphere, but to raise their faith. And I don't much feel it myself, but I'll feel it if it comes back. When I was laying hands on you, I did not feel it coming back. That went right into you. And whether you feel anything different right now, it looks like you're going through something. Is, are you okay? Okay, but is it, is it good what's going on? Yeah? You want to tell us what it feels like? It feels warm. That's just what... Okay. Feels like I'm going to have more peace. I believe I'm going to have more peace. peace? More peace because um, of the stuff that was going on in my head. Oh, yeah, that's where the enemy attacks. Yeah, yeah. because I was still connected to the alcoholic. So we feel like we're second string, like we're damaged goods. Like, yeah, I'm hearing the Christian thing, but if you really knew what, what yeah, you, if you really knew, you wouldn't let me. I, I went through that in early ministry. If they really knew what was going on in my mind, they wouldn't give me the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I got a kid, follow, this kid following me once years ago, and he's looking at me, and he wants to be in healing ministry, and he's looking at me, you know, and I go to lay hands on somebody, and I had a thought go through my head which is kind of funny, crazy. And he saw the reaction on my face and he said, well, could I ask you a question? I said, please. He said, what just went through your mind when God healed that person? I said, you don't want to know. He said, no, really, I do want to know. Please tell me what just went through your mind. I said, I was hearing the three stooges. <laughs> Seriously, now that sounds stupid, but that's me. I grew up watching the Three Stooges, and my brother and I like to, you know, back and forth, and here we are, I'm 70, and he's, you know, he's going to be 70, and we're still talking Stooges sometimes. I'm a little kid. Okay, it's okay. That's who I am. Praise God. You know, give me a break, right? But when I'm ministering and that goes through my head, it's like, okay, but God just said, well, don't worry, because it's my ministry anyways. You can be a clown if you need to be, but I'll heal the kid. <laughs> Got it? All right. So it's okay. You know, and you can't, I, somebody said, I just had a dirty thought. And well, 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 you know, I, said, I, I get that. I says, we all, we get them. Most people won't admit it, but we get them. Or less than life-giving thoughts, whatever. It doesn't have to be dirty, sexual or something. But it can be something angry or whatever it might be. And I said, but you can't stop a bird from flying over your head. <laughs> but you can stop them from building a nest. <laughs> right? That old saying. So don't play with it. Don't, don't tease it. Don't tickle it. Let it be. Get rid of it. Wayne said a great thing. He's with this old timer named Elmer. I forget who the guy. The guy was a long time father in the faith to Wayne. Wayne was a young guy, right? And so the guy's walking through the airport, and Wayne's his armor bearer, and the guy's going, <laughs> "What's this guy chewing? Oh, what's it? What's he got chew? What's he doing?" <laughs> After about you know a few minutes of walking through the terminal with this guy and father in the faith, a man of great integrity, right? Going, <laughs> you know, not a flake, just solid guy, right? Go. Because you might be asking, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I get these thoughts from time to time. I'm just spitting them out. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure, well, that, I don't have to go through a whole thing. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. I just, please heal me. I just go. <laughs> and when I do that, Wayne laughs. He says, had another one, did you? <laughs> so now if you see me going, you know, just pray for me, okay? <laughs> well, it's true. My Christianity is functional. It's not religious, it's relational, it's functional. And if the people realize it was functional, they might want to be involved in it. It's an awesome way. Our daughter over here, sister over here is a street evangelist and she's got the gift that she has of hunger for people's hearts and compassion and souls. She told me that and came out of a background that I didn't come out of, I came out of my own. She came out of hers. We all come out of different backgrounds, right? But the fact is, is we are the gifts we are at any given point in time, who we are, where we are, as long as we keep connecting with him. It's not about being perfect. It's about continuing to walk the walk. As I shared earlier, God didn't take away the speed bumps when I became a Christian. He gave me shock absorbers. Shock absorbers. He didn't take away the bumps. He gave me shock absorbers. All right. And so the bottom line is, it's not about being perfect. It's about turning to him and continuing to fill up because, you know, the enemy doesn't know he lost. He's a knucklehead. All right? He doesn't know he's lost. You know, he didn't get the memo. 
we have to continually send them the memo with the word of God because it's all about the word powered by the Holy Spirit. It's about the living rhema word, right? So when Jesus went about all the villages and healing everybody, how did he do that? I have had meetings where that has happened. I have gone to meetings where everyone was a me. First time it happened was in Stratford, New Zealand at a vineyard church called the, No, no, that was the other church that hosted us. It was a church down the street, the Apostolic Church down the street. My wife and there's about 45 people in the room. Everybody we laid hands on got healed that night. And as we walked up to our room, we were both limping. <laughs> Figure it out. I'm limping a little bit now because I fell. I'm healed. I, I shouldn't, by the natural, I should not be standing right now by the accident I had at the end of February. But God healed me. Is it total yet? No. Why? I don't know. But I'm giving thanks for what I have. And every once in a while, I growl and spit when I get a little pain and turn the wrong way. But I don't ask him why. I just say thank you for what I have. Somebody give me an amen. And sometimes I've had to teach myself to do that because it's sometimes not my first inclination. Many times I have the mind of Christ, but I don't access it right away. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oof, whoa. All, healing all. Why does my wife have this Chaco Marie tooth thing that they told her that she has? It's not a dental problem. It's it's muscles and nerves. Her feet bones in the wrong in her feet in her hands going in the wrong direction, right? You know. And somebody said that's terminal. I, I said, well, we're all terminal. <laughs> I mean, we're all terminal. We're all heading to heaven. I mean, you know, we know Jesus. You're heading to heaven. Just a matter of when and how and how much fun you have along the way. <laughs> Basically, I look at it, you know, I'm 73. I know you don't think I'm 73. Alcohol was a preservative. <laughs> All right. But the fact is, how many I, you, you, I turned 65, I started looking at things differently. What am I going to do the rest of my life? What do I want to be known for? What legacy am I leaving my kids and grandkids and great grandkids when they show up? They haven't yet. What am I, what, what am I going to do with my time? What do I really want to do? What do I want him to do through me? It was important for me to be here this weekend. God wanted me to be here this weekend. I had an opportunity not to be here this weekend, but I chose to be here this weekend because he wanted me to be here for such, you know, for each one of you in a different reason. For the moto moto, more fire. What happened yesterday? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so I choose where I get to be. I now live in the land of get to, not got to. I don't got to do anything. I get to. I get to be with y'all. I don't have to be. I get to. When I live my life from the place of get to, my heart is open. The sound is different. I hear the sound of heaven. I feel the love of the Father much easier than when I got to, because when I got to, I'm dealing in resentment and I'm refeeling the things of the old. Centauri to feel. I refeel my past and I use it as a reason not to pick up my pallet. Remember what we started with? Jesus asked the guy, do you want to be healed? And he said, oh, there's nobody to pick me up and throw me in the water. He didn't answer the question. He diverted. He was living in his past. When Jesus brought him into the now, Arise, take up your pallet, your bed, and walk. The miracle happened because he went from the past into the now. And that's probably the key thing I can tell you in this whole time together is it's when you stay in the now and you're not looking for excuses or you're not mentally ascending as to why something didn't happen. When we mentally ascend, we begin to start our own religion. Why didn't I get healed? I must be doing something wrong. No. Stay in the light. It's my time. Stay in the light. Get out of the darkness and stay in the light. And watch me work. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. John 1, 4. Stay in the light. Go and sin no more. Why? So I won't get punished? I grew up thinking it was a punishing God. No. No. There was a third step out of those 12 steps was make a decision to turn your will and your life over to God as you understood him. Are you kidding? The God I grew up with, I'm not turning anything over. The lightning bolt throwing God, well, you know, what if he's cross-eyed and the guy sitting next to me is a sinner? 
<laughs> like, hello, you know, no, it's a whole new covenant. Veni to come, veni vidi, come, veni, come, co, come, co, vena, to come together. I'm together with him in communion with him. I'm in covenant with him. Jesus didn't come in the new covenant to hold back an angry God with his arm. The God of the old covenant. He did not come to keep us protected from an angry God of the old covenant. That's why he is the sacrificial lamb. Yes, Ashland, the lion of Judah roars, but it's the blood of a lamb that saves us wow by his blood that's it whoa that tomb that he walked out of became the womb of the new covenant the tomb became the womb the bursting plate of the new covenant go ahead Where jesus said when uh, the, sorry. I get you. For Jesus said, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees came up to him and asked him, why are you drinking with the tax collectors, the sinners and the prostitutes and all the dirt poor and everything else? And he said, for I came not to heal the well, but to heal the sick because the, the Lord in John eleven thirty five. 35, the smallest book in the Bible, he says, Jesus wept. And it's to the weeping of compassion. That's right. Right here. Let's put our hands towards our sister right now. Right now. And I proclaim the sensitivity you are and you have is a gift. And not for you to pick up the things as you're out in the street ministering his love evangelizing bringing the good news with all those that need it those that would be looked down upon that you would not because of your openness and sensitivity in the spirit pick up that which is not yours not hold on to that which is not yours a mighty woman of god be free be free in the power of his word and in the light of the holy spirit and everybody said you got a great compassion about you. God bless you. Wow, wow, wow. Are you the, the glory? The Father is the only one that gives the glory. Amen. Yep, that's right. Amen, amen. Daddy love. Wow, are we good? Good. All right. Well, today's gone a lot different than I thought. Usually does. I usually get to new use, use my notes again because I don't use them the first time. I got notes I haven't used in years, and they're good notes. <laughs> See, you the all through the All right, this is good. Matthew nine twenty three to twenty six. Matthew nine twenty three to twenty six. When Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing. He said to them, make room for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But the crowd was put outside. He went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. You notice he didn't say in the name of Jesus. I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying, notice what's going on here. Nothing wrong with the name of Jesus. It's a name above all other names. But when it's used religiously, wrote as a tag on on the end of a prayer, there's no power in it. It's not the word. It's not the content. It's the intent. Whew. He went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. If you knew, if I knew him, like I would like to know him, which I believe I am on the way to knowing him, then if someone was dead and I took their hand, I believe they would arise. Wouldn't it be something if every time you wanted something to happen, you took them by the hand, the laying on of hands, and it happened? Well, we're to the point where we see it happen a lot, but not all the time. I was in South Africa. There was a man on the street, dead. His wife or girlfriend or whoever was holding his 
adults and she was crying. There was five or six people around him. I'm in the car with my wife, Cynthia, and Wayne Anderson, my spiritual dad. And Wayne says, get out of the car and rise that guy from the dead. <laughs> and raise him from the dead. Just go in and do it. Don't ask permission. I walked in. I heard the wailing of the siren in the distance. There was five or six people standing around. Right? I felt like I was in a movie, touched by an angel. That's what I was thinking as I was walking in. Right? I didn't know what I was going to do. And I got there. And what I did is I put my hands on him like paddles. And I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he jumped back to life. And I went, whoa, 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 whoa. I got in the car, wait, whoa, 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 wait, the, the, the dead guy ain't dead at the dead anymore. He goes, isn't it cool? He'd been in the aid car in Seattle. He'd been in the emergency car in Seattle as a fireman. He, he raised many people from the dead in Seattle. He once had a tour of the different places as he was teaching us in a healing school, a miracle school where the dead people were. He said, I, I'd get out there and I'd lay hands on somebody and they'd come back to life. I ate a lot of meals alone in the firehouse with the other guys on the other side of the room looking at me. And they ridiculed Jesus, the girl that was dead. They mocked him. They made fun of him. He got them out of the room. So what does that mean in healing protocol? Take the atmosphere. Don't ask permission. Take, be courteous, but don't ask permission. There's a difference between working in courtesy and being politically correct. Politically correct takes you down to a cesspool. On the surface, it looks nice, but the intent is different. It's always a downward swirl. You want to be courteous. Autonomy means you're free. And many people coming out of religious backgrounds and churches and want us, they, 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 they want to be free. And they're free. And as soon as they get free, they almost want you to take hold of them again and tell them what to do. I get more aggravation from people in relationship with not for what I've done, but what they thought we should have done. Because they're used to being controlled. And guess what? God's not in control. You've heard that from pulpits, I'm sure. Well, God's in control. No, he's not. He's in charge. God's large and in charge. He won't come against his word. His word is sovereign. He will not come against his word. He gives us free will. He's like, I had an atheist once on one of the calls we were doing way before, way before Zoom. We were doing a Kingdom Now call. And an atheist gets on, a guy gets on and says, you know, if your God is so loving, how come children are starving around the world? I said to Wayne, I got this one. <laughs> I said, there's enough food in the world? He goes, yeah. If everyone to be fed, it was evenly distributed? Yeah. Well, then you're not doing your job. <laughs> Stop blaming God. <laughs> I don't believe in him. Well, it's okay. It is? Yeah, he believes in you. <laughs> it's all right. I said, it takes a lot of faith to be an atheist. <laughs> really does, you know? And so I just love them. I said, it's all right, man. We love you right where you are. I'm not going to fight with you. I love you. I didn't come here to judge you harshly. I, I came to create an atmosphere of love that hopefully you'd walk into and have it change you sometime. The works of mercy, feeding and clothing and loving and compassion, like my sister was just demonstrating and saying, right? That's set an atmosphere that they walk into. Don't tell them what they're doing wrong. Show them what's right. <sighs> wow. And that's where we have to arise in the church today. That's a word for the church. It's like, wow. So when we're that way, you're setting an atmosphere. And that's the atmosphere that the Holy Spirit goes, oh, I'm here on earth, but boy, this feels like heaven. I think I'll stay. <laughs> Isn't it funny that the dove, if we've got doves in our backyard. My wife planted trees and bushes because she likes birds. And when we moved in Idaho, we we're in a dust bowl, you know, in a, in a new subdivision. And so we put trees in and grass in and, you know, fences up and birdhouses. And all of a sudden we get birds. I got like 40 doves every morning having breakfast. I can't go near the window to scare the doves have to eat. I honor my wife. <laughs> She's a bird lover. I get it. I'm a bird liker. <laughs> they call me the tolerator. Here comes the tolerator. 
I feed the birds, but nobody sees me. I don't want that to get out, okay? <laughs> and and uh, But the doves, with the slightest move, the doves flutter off. It almost sounds like a <laughs> shove the dove. Same in the spirit. It's easy to shove the dove. Things like gossip. Well-meaning gossip. <laughs> you know. It's an atmosphere. We had intercessors praying for this meeting. You know, I go places and I hear people yakking about leadership and stuff. I say, stop it. Wow, we're working real hard to create an atmosphere of heaven here. And you're messing it up. So please help us and don't do that lovingly. And, and if you can't, then go someplace else and mess that up. <laughs> we love you, but stop it. Hold your tongue, will you? So don't do that. And if it's be quiet, silence is complicity. Silence is complicity. Stop it. We're trying to create an atmosphere that the Holy Spirit shows up, and when people walk in the room, they get healed. So we don't need the laying on of hands, even though it's good. God tells me at different meetings, don't lay hands. Do so, especially during COVID, you couldn't. I couldn't come near people. They would. I still still was going out ministering. I wasn't going to stop. Right. I'd only wear a mask so that if they felt good, and sometimes I didn't, but I would if it bothered them. So out of courtesy for them, autonomy is being free to do what you want to do with respect to everyone around you. Big difference. Right. And so I'd go forget. I'd go to lay hands and oh, no, no, no. I get more of that. So I'd say, wait a minute. It's OK. I got six foot faith. <laughs> and all of a sudden I had six foot faith. And then I was on the internet because we were on the internet more. We we're doing Zoom Zoom calls. We still do them. We do a Zoom call every Tuesday night. Be five o'clock here Pacific, six o'clock Mountain Time. We are in Idaho, on Facebook, and we're moving other platforms. But we're on Facebook, and uh, we do the Miracle Hour. My wife and I and people come on and get healed, or people come on and become part of the prayer team. Come on and say hey, you know. Come on and say hey, you know. Be part of the deal. It's awesome on my Facebook page. I am Kevin Ford at Facebook.com. Come on and be part of the team. We see we had people get healed all last week. It was awesome. Legs and ankles and shoulders and eyeballs and all kinds of good things happen. You know, it's, woo, woo. we set an atmosphere. And I, when I say fire across the internet, guess what? People, are, whoa, I felt the fire across the internet. That's not me. That's him. I'm not that good. I have trouble starting a campfire. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's it's how did they all get healed through experiential faith? Jesus knew he only did what he saw the Father doing. You commune with him and the Father. Commune and through experiential faith, you, you're gonna know when I walk up to someone and I say, When you hear me say, Come here, God's gonna take care of that right now. I waited a minute with you until I got in the place I needed to be. How did I do that? Did I strive? I got to get there. I got to help her. No, I yielded. I said, Papa, you want her free. Okay. Give me a second. I'm there. I yield. I share it all the time. My new age friends ask me what my sign is. I tell them to yield. <laughs> <laughs> what month is that? Every month. You guys only get one month. You're getting cheated. I yield to the Holy Ghost. I love him. I'm not making fun of him. I'm playing. I'm having fun. Look, look at your hands. See the stripes? I'll be with people that, you know, maybe aren't believers, and I'll say, uh, they may even be, uh, you know, in the other side or whatever, in the darkness. And I'll say, you see those stripes? I say, yeah. They look like the stripes of Jesus. I think you're going to be a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> say these words. <laughs> Why? You don't want to live an unfulfilled prophecy, do you? No. <laughs> God will give you a word for someone if you believe it. Well, I'm not a prophet. No, but I'll prophesy. I'm not an intercessor. All should intercede. I don't have a healing gift. Yes, you do. Unlock it. Exercise it. I can't evangelize. Sure you can. Sure you can. Get out and do it. Bring the good news. You stumble around a little bit like me and the guy with the plane the first time, right? Yeah. I'll ask for a word. The Holy Spirit will say, give me a word. I haven't done it yet. I may do it for tonight. I don't know. Say, so give me a word for somebody that's going to be there tonight that I don't know. And give me the word and give me enough of an inkling so they'll know it's for them. Right? So I'm in Grand Forks, North Dakota of all places, right? I'm in Grand Forks. 
And the Lord, I'm doing a healing meeting. There's about, I don't know, 30, 35 people in the room. And, and uh, the Lord says, uh, I want to heal a person. Um, and uh, they've uh, just had uh, a problem with their circulatory system. Um, and uh, what were the initials? He gave me the initials. Um, and they live on the other side of the river, which would be East Grand Forks. You got North Dakota, the Grand Forks River, Minnesota. East Grand Forks is Minnesota. Uh, the initials were RM. So I said, again, with a bold voice, excuse me, <laughs> somebody with the initials RM, the Lord wants to heal them. If that's somebody here, have just had a problem with this circulatory system and you live on the other side of the river. It's pretty specific. Guy raises his hand, but I knew his name was Gary as I prayed from before. He says, that's my brother, Ron Machand, and he just had a stroke. I went, Whoa. That's him. I was just listening. I was a conduit. Well, he gave me a second one that night. And there was a lady in the meeting that was messing up the meeting. You know, she was messing with my atmosphere. She was mocking spirit. She was mocking me, you know. And so I loved her out of the meeting. You know, she had a stiff neck, stiff neckedness, if you would. And I laid my hands on her and I figured she's either going to get delivered or she's going to leave. And she left. And that was okay. And then the three or four people I'd prayed to previously that didn't have anything happen, it started opening up, the healing started popping. But in the interim, I had a second word, and the second word was somebody just had uh, a, a grandchild that had a negative interaction with a dog. Buy a puppy for the child. It will go a long way to taking care of and nurturing the trauma that they just felt from. And so as I'm walking out of the room, lady in a wheelchair I'd prayed for before. And she said for me, that was pretty cool what happened with that lady. I said, yeah, you saw that? She goes, yeah, that, that, you did good. That was good. I said, well, thank you. She says, and how long have you been doing that word thing? I said, that was the first one. She goes, that was cool. She, I said, well, there was a second one. She goes, yeah. I said, I didn't give it because I was a little addled from the spiritual warfare we were going through there. And she said, well, tell me. So I put my bag down. I was walking out the door, put my coat off, put my bag down, told her about the dog and the kid. She said, that was my grandson. He just got a tick by a pat bull, attacked by a pit bull, a ticked by a pat bull, <laughs> attacked by a pit bull. Easy for me to say. <laughs> I wixed my merds. <laughs> so the accent was on the wrong syllable. <laughs> so, Anyways, God wouldn't let me out of the room. He didn't want me to think what I did was a one-hit wonder. I can access that anytime I can, and guess what? So can you. And I release that into you right now. So can you. So can you. I was in Chula Vista, down by San Diego, Mexican border. And I was in a morning meeting in a Spanish church and other pastors there, and they liked the ministry. And so they said, I like the way God's working through you. So could you come and do our meeting? We had a meeting at five o'clock. I said, sure, I'll come back. So the, my host took me to the meeting because I had another interpreter. And he gives an interpreter and the Lord had given me a word for someone. And the word was, there's two people here. They're evangelists and they like to play football, which is not gridiron, but soccer. In, you know, in Latino countries, it's, it's, you know, soccer. So, okay. He says, and they're evangelizing. Uh, I want them to evangelize and use the sports as a, the soccer as a venue for uh, uh, their evangelism. And he gave me the numbers 317. Something 317. Is that like a street number? Oh, I don't know what it is. So I just, he just said, don't be asking me questions. Just throw the number out. So I did. The guy that's interpreting for me is laughing, translating. He goes, that's me and the catcher over there. <laughs> he says, we're on the soccer team and we're evangelists. We want to be evangelists. Would you pray for us? And I said, and what's the 317? This was the beginning of March. He says, that's my birthday, 317, March 17th. God gave me just enough so that he didn't know it was for him. And we released the word of the Lord. And so that's just something he does with me. But guess what? He can do those kind of things with you also. If you ask him, you believe, and you step out in it, and you, you know, the first of all, the fear was, I must be making it up. And the Lord says to me, do you have an imagination? Yeah. Do you have the mind of Christ? Yeah. You think maybe you're hearing from me? You got an image maker? So I believe now. And even when no one answers the call, 
usually someone will come up to me afterwards and say, well, I was a little shy, I didn't want to come up. Or someone will say the next day in the, in the next meeting, they'll say, yeah, I was online, that was me. So just believe. If he gives you the word, believe you're hearing his voice and you walk through it. Is that good? Yeah, let's see what else he wants to do here. Give me a second, because we're in no chronological order of anything here, except his order. Yeah, never say that you can't. I used to say, oh, I'm with Wayne, I'm just doing the healing thing, I'm not gonna be prophetic. And I was in Kansas, in a gymnasium, a church was being held in a gym in, in Lawrence, Kansas, and there was probably 20 people in the room. I had them in a circle, and I was in the middle. I used to play. I'd get inebriated in the spirit in the early days and prophesy. I would only prophesy when I was inebriated in the spirit because I was afraid to do it like it was a holdover from when I was an alcoholic. I'd have to be drunk to go out and have a good time. I'd, have to, I'd actually have to have a drink to go out drinking. <laughs> As sad as that is, okay? And, and so I'm not celebrating the sin, I'm just saying that was, that was my life, you know? And so at any rate, uh, um, the bottom line is, is that uh, I'd say, well, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a prophet guy, I'm not. And so the, let's just stop that. So I'm in the circle and I'm playing pin the tail on the Christian. You know, I mean, we were in a circle last night, right? And I'm prophesying. That's what I was doing. I was prophesying, playing, right? And words coming out and the Lord says, I want you to do that sober. And so anyways, I give this girl, I mean, this, this gal, she's about 19 years old. And I started singing a song, which I often do. Well, just gave me a song. I started singing a song and she started crying. I said, oh, what did I do? She said, my father passed away two weeks ago. That was a song he sang to me as a little girl. And I went, wow, I must be hearing from you. So take that to heart. Don't say you're not. He's made you certain ways and you have certain gifts. And those things are ascended. They're in ascendancy. They're easier for you to do than something else. And, pro and practice those so you really get good at them, him working through you. All you have to do is open up and let him work through you. It's that simple. And then go to something you're not so good at, like I was, and then watch yourself become good at it because it's him. All I have to do, what did I say before? Keep your heart open to give and receive his love, and he will bring you through the stages of life that he wants you to come through. Amen? Wow. Okay. So this is something, Matthew 8, 14 and 15, I've been practicing for the last probably year and a half, <clears throat> different times. Uh, I won't say the words. We, we trained evangelists, young evangelistic teams for years. We trained 21 teams. We teach them not to pray, but to release. Jesus didn't so much pray for people as he healed them. That might sound like he's preaching heresy here. The guy from Idaho is pretty, no, I'm not. It's, it's in the word. Now you might say, well, they, they anointed with oil, you went to the elders and they prayed. Okay, what I'm saying is that I'm releasing the word of the Lord into them. I'm filling up on his word and releasing the word by the Holy Spirit. I'm not asking God to do something for them, even though he will. I'm asking it to do with them and through us and the Holy Spirit, right? You know, from the heart of the Father, through the Spirit, and us because of Jesus. That's the protocol. God will do it for you if he chooses because he's God. But in this season, he wants to do it with us and through us because he's in us. I'm seeing that very, very much, very much. That's what he's saying to me. And that's, so that's why I'm sharing that with you. But Matthew 8, 14, Jesus had come into Peter's house and he saw his wife's mother, right? Peter's mother. His mother-in-law lying sick in the fever. This is a good move on Peter's part. He touched her hand. The fever left her. He touched her hand. He didn't say a lot of prayer. He touched her hand. You got to practice that. You got to believe it. He'll say to me, I don't want you praying for people. I don't want you saying words. I want you to go through a meeting and lay hands on people. So I practiced doing that. Didn't mean I couldn't lay hands again. He says, just for right now, I want to stretch your faith. I want to show you 
like with the six foot faith and with like over the internet and with all that, hello pastor, with all of that, um, that you could do that. And so he stretches, stretch, it will stretch us as he wants to. And then you just, it's another arrow in your quiver. It's another thing you can use. It's not one protocol. Get used to different things. Get used to. Now you see me, I mean, you'll see me sing a song tell a story, try to be funny. I don't try to be funny anymore. I just let God do what he's going to do. But the fact is, is that um, when I was out there in the world, I was bartending, I wanted to be a comedian. And I was behind the bar and I was funny. But it's easy to be funny when you're a bartender because if you're not funny, you just walk down to the end of the bar and pour a drink. <laughs> You go do what you do. So that was at the place called the Red Fox Inn. They're dear friends of mine. They just sold it. And um, they said, we're bringing comedians up from New York City and Connecticut, and we want you to be the opener. We want you to set an atmosphere. Of, and so I did. I bombed. It was horrible. <laughs> it was painful. I mean, I, <laughs> it was awful. I wanted to go hide. No one's laughing, and you're up there on stage. And, it's not like the bar. They laugh when I'm behind the bar. What's going on? It was like, it was like and so I forgot about it. I said, no, nah, I'm not doing that anymore, right? And then one day during a convening, and I am convening in upstate New York, my spiritual father says, well, we've done everything we needed to do in the last three nights spiritually. It's Friday night. Why don't you take it? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he said, that's not what I mean. He said, just go be who you So there's no pressure on me at all. Just go do what you got to do, right? And all of a sudden, the spirit of funny came over me. And I went for an hour and a half, and a lady brought a lady in from never been to church before. And she says, is this church? This is like a comedy club. If I'd known that, I would have been here before. She says, well, it's not like this every night. <laughs> but this kid just showed up. We don't know who he is, but it's crazy, right? So I don't try to do that, but God uses that gift in me, okay? And you all get gifts in you, okay? So I'm not saying you gotta be funny to heal. I'm not creating a protocol, but what I'm really doing is taking my mind off the problem that maybe it won't happen because that's what the enemy's doing is hammering my ear saying, someone will ask me to pray for their ears. Last night, a guy got healed of 97% hearing in his right ear loss. I get hearing aids in. And the enemy would say to me, what are you going to do? You're not, you're not going to do anything. Well, the enemy's a liar because I'm not doing it anyways. It's God. But the enemy would trick you into thinking, oh, yeah, maybe. Right? Because you just you bite the hook, you bite the apple, and you go for a ride. Right? And so basically... Right. I'll do many things to shut down the voice of the enemy. Tell stories. We played the healing, the, the, the hearing game. We played a game last night. You guys were here. I stepped away and mentioned a food. And each time I mentioned a little further and the guy resonated back the food without looking and had his good ear blocked and he heard. And, and all of a sudden it was a game and people were having fun and no one was thinking about is it working or not working. I've used that experientially a lot of places that I go. That's not the only way I pray for ears. But when he says to, I've got that arrow in my quiver and I pull it out. And so anybody on that end of the room when we started yeah but as you're playing the game with him yeah i could hear all the i don't maybe i was hungry because you're <laughs> yeah, because we're talking food yeah 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 <laughs> that's cool so yeah, i'm glad you were hungry <laughs> so you see what i'm saying so i i, I god will use you different ways don't be re religiously irreligious you know don't be doing stupid stuff but with you know what i'm saying is is no i got i got I have filters, internal filters that, you know, when I was drinking in the old days, I didn't have filters and say, stu say and do stupid stuff. Okay, I'm seriously, okay? But if I'm inebriated in the spirit, the love of the Father, if you will, I have filters that I know things not to say and do. The Holy Spirit will stop me, all right? So there is an internal checks and balances there, okay? But the whole time that's going, I'm not thinking about the problem. I'm living in the solution and watching God work. By the time we got to prime rib, the third course last night, <laughs> went from salad, maybe it was the second course, we were already turning. He was already hearing because I guess he likes prime rib. <laughs> Guy, you hear that? <laughs> 
I just don't, you don't have to do that. That's what I did, all right? I'm just saying something like that. So don't say you can't do something. You're not prophetic or you don't have divine healing or you can't do miracles. Yes, you can. Just he will meet you the way he meets me because he loves you just like he likes me, loves me. Because I never thought I'd prophesy that way about getting words for people that I don't even know that are going to be in the meeting. Because I started practicing it because he did it to me once and said, I want you to continue to do this. Ask him to do the same thing with you. Ask him to show up in your life. My wife asked Jesus to show up in person for two years every day straight. I'm in New Zealand, she's in Florida, in Tampa, in our backyard in Valrico, and behind her, she hears the voice, she's watering the hibiscus, she hears the voice, Cynthia, do you still want to see me? <sighs> she turned around and hit the deck. I call her a few hours later on Skype. I think we were using Skype at the time or something. And all I can hear is, G -g 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 you trying to say Jesus? Show, show, show showed up jesus showed up my narcissistic way i said, did he ask for me <laughs> she said as a matter of fact he did he said give him a call it's local <laughs> it's all about me <laughs> he's been he's been to her four times because she asks asks that's crazy. There's people that don't believe that. That's okay. That's her experience. You know, when I remember, I ask. Yeah. Wow. Well, we all come together if you want. You don't have to. I'm inviting you. Let's just all come together in a, like we did last night, a circle. I just want to. See what he wants to do, close this out. Let's just push this back a bit here. Oh. Careful. So this way, it rolls easier. So let's push it back here. There we go. Any, any circle, any kind of circle you want. Circle, parallelogram, rhombus. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. beep. <laughs> I got two beautiful potholders from my sister here when I walked in today. It was awesome. She, I don't know, she was, by the spirit knows I like to cook. It was on my wife's list of what she wanted in a husband. Cook, yeah, cook was about halfway down. 